Good evening, sports fans. This is Jim for the Three Minute AD. Um, I'm wishing you all the best as we get into the spring season. <laughs> You'll have to excuse the fuzziness and the in and out of the picture. I'm doing this from my laptop today. Uh, just got back from the North Carolina Athletic Directors Conference. What a great bunch of people down there. They're, you know, they they work so darn hard to make things right for their uh, for their student athletes and. Um, you know, it goes without saying that uh, their push for mandatory certification is uh, second to none uh, that I could see from, you know, the people that I've talked to. So it was just a pleasure to be there and to teach and present. But <clears throat> I was particularly moved this morning. Um, we had an athletic trainer get up and talk about the mandatory uh, need for mandatory athletic trainers in school districts in North Carolina. And, you know, although most of us here in New York have athletic trainers, you know, the one thing that was glaring was uh, the amount of incidents, uh, fatal incidents that have happened recently across the nation. And one of the items that she brought up was um, from the outside the lines show, if you guys have ever watched that, it's a, um, it's an expose by ESPN. They take subject matter, you know, just, you know, kind of like the 2020 and, you know, 60 minutes kind of stuff, but it's more geared to sports. And this one was about a Kentucky high school athlete that had um, passed away from cardiac arrest because the AED was not present. Now, now we take a lot of things for granted. We all have AEDs here in New York for the most part. You know, we're going back to the tragic death of Louis Acampora back in uh, 2000 and uh, the mandate that's here in New York that, you know, uh, made us do something that was necessary and right. You know, now that they're available, technology has given us something we can use to say. The part of this that was the most glaring was that each school in Kentucky had to have a mandatory emergency action plan. And we have those in New York. We have emergency action plans. We give them to our coaches. They have to fill them out. And the emergency action plan is what to do in the event of emergency and what actions do we take if the coach goes down you know who gets the aed who calls 911 who does this who does that you know those things are there they're written on a piece of paper well guess what sports fans that piece of paper goes into a folder somewhere and we never see it again you know athletic directors have meetings and in those meetings we talk about the need to maintain a safe environment and we tell the coaches that they're responsible for their emergency action plans, and we want them in the office by um, September 1st. Well, between August 24th and September 1st, that's a week of practice. Emergency action plans need to be done before the season starts. And emergency action plans need to be practiced. And, you know, when I was AD, I tried to get that home. I didn't check on, on it to make sure they did it. They just knew they had to practice it. And did I trust them to do it? Yeah, of course I did. Did they do it? I don't know. And that's terrible on my part. And it's a, it's a terrible admission. And just because I got away with um, not checking and we did not have a tragedy, you know, who's next? Because these tragedies happen. Um, we can stop the tragedies from happening if we just go one extra mile. Practice your emergency action plan. I don't care if it's a day of practice. I don't care if it's a, if you do it twice a month. I don't care if you do it every day. But just like anything else in your practice, your emergency action plan needs to be practiced. And it needs to be done live. And it needs to be done in full view of you so that you can ensure that they're doing it properly. Coaches have a huge responsibility. Head coaches, they're the bosses of the program. But really, what it all comes down to is, do I have the emergency action plan on file? Have they practiced the emergency action plan? And are you confident that they could put it into action, God forbid, in the event of, a, of an emergency like a cardiac arrest of a, of a coach, a, a player, a spectator, an official, or a security guard, anyone for that matter? Can we put those things into motion? You know, the trainer in this particular case, was 350 yards away and did not bring the AED with him. Yeah, I, I know my trainer has his own or had his own, um, still does. Teams had their own. But are we are we set up with every single team in every place ready to go? 
it all comes down to practice guys. And I know we're going a little longer than three minutes, but the life of a student athlete or, or a guest or coach means more than however much an AED costs or however much 15 minutes out of one practice a week or a month means to uh, ensure that everyone's going to be safe. So I know this is a little off. It's, it's a little scary sometimes, but when you see that video um, and you can Google it, it's on YouTube. It's outside the lines, Kentucky athlete, AED. It's only had about 16,000 views and this happened in 2020. So, you know, let's, let's push this thing a little bit. Everybody should really watch this. It'll wake you up a little bit. So without further ado, this is Jim for the three minute AD. Thank you again to my buddies in North Carolina for letting me uh, have some time down there. It's great to see everybody. And um, I'm looking forward to um, doing more with them in the future. And um I just wish you all the best and good luck in the spring. God bless you all. Have a great time. And uh, again, stay safe and practice your emergency action plan.